One thing I always love about Black Ops games are the challenges, specifically the Dark Ops challenges, coming with an air of mystery for a while of what you need to do to actually complete them. With Black Ops Cold War, they've returned, offering up challenges for all areas of play, starting with campaign, moving to multiplayer, and then zombies. There's something for everyone who may be a challenge hunter in this game when it comes to secret challenges. So today I wanted to put together a quick little guide on how each and every one is unlocked so that if you're interested in netting yourself some rarer calling cards or just some nice XP bonuses, you can do so with relative ease, or at least in some cases. Some of the challenges are quite absurd, and you'll see why in just a second, but we'll get to all that in this video. As we go along, let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of these challenges? Kind of crazy, kind of easy, pretty cool, whatever it is, let me know your thoughts below. As well, if you are new to the channel, do be sure to the subscribe button as we're on that road to 400,000 subscribers, and we'll keep you up to date with all you need to know in relation to Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, and anything COD related. So if that interests you at all, and you'd like to join the community, I'd love to have you. But that said, let's jump into it. For this video, I want to start out with the campaign Dark Ops challenges first and foremost, simply because these are probably the easiest to do, but also require some general direction and, and I can actually offer some guidance here on how to complete these as opposed to MP and zombies where they're all pretty straightforward. They're just hard to do. But at any point, if you want to skip ahead to another section of the video, this will utilize the chapters feature enabled on YouTube so that you'll be able to see in the video timeline sections for each category the game is broken into. But starting with campaign, let's start out with the Retro Gamer Dark Ops Challenge. This tasks you with unlocking all arcade machines throughout the entire campaign. For this, you end up netting a calling card reward, and there are 10 arcade machines spread around the various missions in the campaign. One mission in particular, you can make some major headway, but others you can find at the following locations. Pitfall 2 can be found in the safe house that you go to every couple of missions, and this one is actually locked away behind a padlocked gate, and there's a sort of easter egg in it of itself to unlock this, where you have to go around and find scraps of paper with highlighted numbers on them, but if you don't feel like actually doing that entire thing, the code is 112263, the date of the Kennedy assassination. Once in, though, just simply interact with the machine, and it clocks it towards your progress. Enduro can be found in Brick in the Wall in the electronics store office right before you enter Krause's apartment building. In the mission red light green light there's actually five of these all within one singular area in the training course arcade room there is barnstorming pitfall river raid grand prix and fishing derby fittingly offering up half of the arcade cabinets in one mission in the actual arcade so those are the most obvious and easiest to find chopper command can be found in the basement of the lubyanka building in desperate measures it's in the back of i believe that's the server room you can take the vent system right there if you want to follow the whole way you just may need to take out two guards with your stealth attack the final two can be found in the mission break on through in the third scenario is when i found them but boxing may actually appear the whole way through i'm just not sure about that one entirely boxing is actually incredibly hard to find here it's on the cliff side tucked away above where the right fork in the road would be but also before you get to the bridge or zip line if you take the left fork in the road so you have to jump down and kind of scale the waterfall to get to the branch necessary to acquire it but it'll be there once you jump down and then finally kaboom is when you're chasing the red door as you first feel the effects of the adrenaline shot there are doors that come into play as that hallway starts to extend and right before it stops there's an open door that has the final arcade cabinet in there all you have to do is hit play on it when it prompts you to and then you'll be credited for unlocking that and once you get all of them you unlock the dark ops challenge for the challenge what do the numbers mean you're tasked with decrypting the operation chaos floppy disk coming along with again just the calling card reward for this this takes a little bit of puzzle working skills and also a bit of evidence that you'll need to find as a prerequisite the first piece of evidence you need is the coded message which is acquired by interrogating kasim javadi in the very first mission of the campaign and interrogating him means simply not throwing him over the edge immediately ask him who arash is meeting with and you'll unlock it then you can do whatever you want to him the second piece comes in the mission brick in the wall where you're given the optional mission to save or silence the informants once you take out the guards you can end up getting the evidence on the table and again either kill or release the informant that's entirely up to you and the final piece needed is in red light green light you're tasked from the beginning to take pictures of the maps of the compound but for this intel you only need three of six though if you can find all six there is another challenge not a dark ops challenge but another challenge overall once all three are collected you'll need to examine the evidence and i'd recommend having a pen and paper or something handy to jot these down and note what you end up getting all of these do change depending on the playthrough and the game save so yours very likely will be different than mine but the first piece of evidence is a headline of reagan being sworn in with random letters highlighted note those down there'll be an anagram the second is a coded message in which you have to figure out the two missing numbers mine was simply an increasing pattern of two four six eight and so on 
So figure out those and note those numbers down. And then the third piece you have to listen to is the number station broadcast, where you have to unscramble your anagram to find one of the cities listed, but also find that corresponding number that you found from the puzzle. Those are your two things you're working with here for this. For my case, my anagram was Raleigh, and my numbers from the puzzle were 45 and 68. So 4568. So what you need to do is take the inverse of those for the broadcast list items. So Raleigh turns then into the number code of 3510 and 4568 turns into Newark. And that's your key. Once you have the inverses, you can then input them into the decrypt option in which the number sequence goes first, followed by the city, and then you can confirm yes, and you'll decrypt that disc. Now, storyline wise, this helps minimally. It helps you with the best outcome of the story, but you get a cool calling card for it. For Defiant, this one's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, actually. All you have to do is attempt to jump to your death and break on through. This one's pretty easy. When you get to that cliffside with the bridge and the zip line in break on through, Adler will tell you to do one thing, just jump off the cliff and you'll be reset. Adler will say something like, sure, Bell, you committed suicide or something like that, but you'll get a cool calling card just for simply doing it. Doesn't really take away from your gameplay at all. Anti-Hero tasks you with wiping out your former teammates using brute force in Ashes to Ashes. Spoiler alert, this is a part of that worst ending that we talked about here on the channel before, where you lie to Adler, set up the ambush, and then you can kill your old teammates one by one. The only thing to note, though, is that it's described as brute force, so you have to do a takedown on them. You can't simply shoot them from a distance, so you have to take out all three up close and personal. Fun fact, there's also a challenge to just shoot Adler instead of giving him a light, which sends you guys into a power struggle to stab each other. That one's not a Dark Ops challenge, but again, another challenge that nets you a calling card. For the Dark Ops challenge of cover your tracks, all you have to do is stash away five bodies as Belikov in desperate measures. Again, this one's pretty self-explanatory. Use your stealth, take out enemies from behind, and then stash the bodies. You can do this with relative ease. And then finally, Awkward Chat tasks you with answering Zakayev's questions correctly in the elevator and desperate measures, where right before you begin the assault on the bunker, Zakayev will stop the elevator doors from closing, board with you, and then start asking questions. The correct answers you're supposed to give are last week, comrade, when asked when you arrived, and we report to Commander Sabal when asked who you report to. This one's told to you by Belikov in the boiler room in passing, so make sure you catch that detail. But completing all of these will net you the Dark Ops Master Calling card for completing all six challenges in the campaign section. So it's a pretty cool animated calling card in my opinion, and it's relatively easy to accomplish if you care for challenges. These ones can all be done in one playthrough, really. You just need to know what to look for. Now, honestly, the rest of these we can actually breeze through because you don't really need any guides or tutorials on how to get different items here with this. But for multiplayer, you firstly have Relentless Killer, which tasks you with earning 10 Relentless Medals, which is 20 kills without dying, and nets you 5,000 XP plus a calling card. Brutal Killer then sees you earning a Brutal Medal, which is 25 kills without dying. That gives you 5,000 XP and a calling card. Nuclear Killer tasks you with earning a Nuclear Medal, 30 kills without dying, 5,000 XP and a calling card for that as well. Frenzy Killer wants you to earn a Frenzy Kill Medal, which is five rapid kills, and that gives you 5,000 XP and a calling card. Mega Killer tasks you with getting a Mega Kill Medal, which is six rapid kills. That gives you 10,000 XP and a calling card. Ultra Killer tasks you with getting an Ultra Kill Medal, 7 Rapid Kills, 10,000 XP and a Calling Card. Chain Killer tasks you with getting a Kill Chain, which is 7 or more players killed rapidly. That is 10,000 XP and a Calling Card. Then moving away from Chain Together or Kill Streak related challenges, we have From the Depths, which tasks you with getting 25 kills against enemies that are on land or a ship's surface when you're shooting at them from underwater with a primary or secondary weapon. That gives you then 5,000 XP and a calling card for completion. Hard Wipe wants you to single-handedly eliminate an entire squad of four players in a fire team mode. That is 5,000 XP and a calling card. Back at you tasks you with throwing a grenade back and killing the enemy that threw it at you for 1,000 XP and a calling card. Nuked Out tasks you with earning a nuclear medal in a free-for-all without using score streak rewards and is a non-lethal perfection gameplay challenge of 30 and 0. That's something that's been there since Black Ops 3 and is quite the challenge in and of itself, but the next one is the really crazy one. Very Nuclear tasks you with earning a nuclear medal with 21 different weapons with all kills coming from that weapon for 5,000 XP and a calling card. Now, this one quite literally may be the toughest challenge in any Call of Duty game ever, especially given the game's current state with skill-based matchmaking. If you're a good player who gets kills rapidly and plays aggressively, you're likely going to get matched up against similar style players. So here's the kicker. If you have to do those types of matches, good luck getting a nuclear with things like a pistol. If anyone completes this, they fall in two different categories. Either one, they are truly a god at Call of Duty, or two, they probably reverse boosted. Which truth be told, if you're going for challenges, I understand both sides of that, man. Like that is an absurd challenge. But fun fact, this challenge 
challenge was in Black Ops 4 and was so widely regarded as such a hard challenge that it actually was changed from that exact same X amount of nuclears with different weapons to just simply achieving the highest form of dark matter, which was 30 kills, not in a kill streak needed on that X amount of weapons required. So simply just getting 30 kills with each gun after you unlocked dark matter was what that challenge was changed into. So maybe we see this happen again here within Black Ops Cold War, but for the time being, this is one that not many people are ever going to touch. Underwater Ops finally tasked you with while underwater planting C4 on an enemy occupied gunboat or wake runner and detonating it to destroy the vehicle as well as killing the occupant of it five times. That gives you 5,000 XP and a calling card. And then if you complete all of these challenges in the multiplayer section, you end up getting the Dark Ops Master Animated Calling Card with 10,000 XP coming along with it. Now, closing out this video, talking about the third and final main mode here within Black Ops Cold War, we have Zombies. Firstly, Reaper of the Undead tasks you with killing 1 million enemies across the lifetime of your career in Black Ops Cold War. That nets you 10,000 XP and a calling card. Armed to the Teeth tasks you with getting two fully pack-a-punched weapons with ammo mods equipped and six perks active. That'll give you 1,000 XP and a calling card. Social Distancing tasks you with reaching round 20 without being hit. So quite the challenge there with that one as well. 5,000 XP and a calling card are yours if you can complete it. The Anvil wants you to exfil a game with only using melee attacks. That'll give you 5,000 XP and a calling card. Another round tasks you with reaching round 100 for 10,000 XP and a calling card. Good enough tasks you with reaching round 20 with only your starting loadout and no upgrades for 10,000 XP and a calling card. Invincible is completed once you've reach round 30 without going down you'll get 10,000 xp in a calling card for that checkmate tasks you with playing every single trial in d machina in a single match for 10,000 xp in a calling card harbinger of doom sees you killing 50 enemies with a single support for 5,000 xp in a calling card evil unleashed is awarded once you complete the main quest in d machina the easter egg here at that for 5,000 xp in a calling card as well box addict is completed by buying every weapon from the mystery box in a single game that rewards you with 5,000 xp in a calling card king of silverbacks is in dead ops arcade earning a cumulative high score of 999 million 999 thousand 999 and that will reward you with 5,000 xp in a calling card and finally pristine pelt is again in dead ops arcade tasking you with defeating mama back in the final round without ever dying coming along with 5,000 XP and a calling card reward as a result. Now, if you complete all of those, again, you probably guessed it, you get another Dark Ops Master Challenge in which that comes along not only as an animated calling card, but a 10,000 XP bonus as well. So there you have it, all of the Dark Ops challenges within Black Ops Cold War, how to unlock them, and some tips on how to do so as well, more specifically with those campaign challenges, because those actually could use some helpful guides with them. The other stuff, again, kind of self-explanatory, straightforward, but just really hard to do. So that's where we're going to wrap it up. I would love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. What do you think of these challenges, firstly, and have you completed any of these Dark Ops challenges, or maybe even any of the full classifications to become a Dark Ops Master? Let me know your thoughts down below, but hopefully you enjoyed the video, and hopefully it helped you out. If it did, make sure you drop a like down below, and of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing. We're getting all things Black Ops Cold War, Warzone, and of course, all things Call of Duty related. We'll keep you up to date with absolutely anything you need to know. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get connected outside of YouTube, practically live on both those. So if you guys want to check my conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. But that said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care, and peace. Oh, 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 oh,